What's up guys, it's Matt from CorneliusCreations.com and this video today is going to be a little different. I am going to be basically modifying this hammer right here. Now I had a client contact me and say, hey man, I really want a Viking hammer. I work on highline poles and stuff, so I want a specific hammer modified with this Viking theme. So this is what I'm going to be doing today. I thought about removing the black coating on the head, but I'm not going to do that. Um, because I know this is going to be out in the weather and everything. So I guess the first step to this would actually be sanding this lightly, getting the, um, the urethane off there, and then we can start actually laying out some designs. The first part in the designing process is actually laying the design. Now you always want to do this on paper so you have a clear idea of what you're going to do. So you can see right there the paper I have on the left. I'm just basically modifying this Viking design. And there is just the backbones of it right there. So always put it on paper first. Okay, so halfway through the actual process of power carving the hammer and me showing you the bits and burrs I use, the memory card throws a failure in my camera, so I have everything else except the actual carving part, which I will go through towards the end of the video and show you the burrs and techniques I use to like do all the knots and everything, so nothing to worry about there. Just want to give you the heads up on that. It was my memory card's fault, so yeah, here we go. So I stuck with my main design right here. I've been just carving on this and sanding like crazy. Here's all my sandpaper I've been using just back and forth. So now it's time to go in here and do some of the fine detail sanding and straighten up some of my edges. Now, a lot of people try to bypass this process, but this process is one of the most important besides the carving. Like I would say 50% of it is sanding. Do not neglect it. Take it down to grits. I think I went from like 80 up to about 400 grits here. Okay, I spent quite a bit of time sanding this. I think it's looking pretty good. It's not perfect, but I'm gonna have to take a break from it and come back and let my eyes sit for a little bit because I've been on here quite some time. So I still got a little bit more work to do to it. And then we're gonna lay out some penciling on here and wood burn it. Okay, I moved outside because it's pretty nice right now. What I'm doing is taking a pencil and just adding in my inner details, I'm going to wood burn. Now I would have wood carved this right here, but I'm just, I'm, I'm not feeling just carving in there. I'm gonna do a lot wood burn on it. And hopefully it will turn out good. Now this is hickory. Hickory is almost a nightmare to wood burn on. So um, hopefully it will turn out pretty good. I'm using a mechanical pencil here. I tend to like those a little bit better than traditional pencils for the simple fact that they don't really go dull. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick tip for you guys. I'm able to get those fine detail lines right there. And the mechanical pencil I'm using has really thick lead, so I don't have to sit there and just, you know, sketch it back and forth. The next step is to wood burn it. I get a lot of questions on the wood burner I use, and the one I'm using is the razor tip. It's a premium wood burner. It's industrial grade, so it's a little bit more expensive but um, it's definitely worth it in the long run when you're doing as much work as I am. At the bottom here, I'm burning in Viking runes, and those go great with just about anything. I love just doing just regular Viking runes like that. And there we go. I added some flame to really bring out the texture in the wood and the wood grain. Now we are going to stain. For the top layer here, I used Minwax Golden Oak. It allowed you to really see the wood burning and stuff in there. Now for the body right here, we are going to use the Special Walnut. Now I went back over this with some Jayco Bean Stain to darken it up just a hair more because I really like the contrasty look of it. Now I'm going to use a paintbrush and apply some Jayco Bean Stain right inside there to darken up the middle of it inside of the negative spaces where the stippling is. And after some urethane, this is the way it looks, but we're not done yet. Let's add some leather. So I cut out a piece of old tan leather here. I'm just going to make a simple little guard on the front. I'm just measuring everything up here. 
make sure it fits. I use my Fordham here just to round off the harsh edges and give a nice rounded look to it. The next step here is to take an edge beveler and just go around the sides of it and to knock off the, the harsh edges and just make everything nice, contrary, and flowy. If contrary is a word. Now I'm drawing a design right here. This would probably be better on some veg tan leather since this is old tan, but I'm really not worried about how nice this looks right here because I'm wanting it to be rustic looking. So I'm totally okay with that. So I have my swivel knife right here just putting in the designs that I just penciled in. And it's turning out pretty cool. Just I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm really not trying to make it look nice. I want it to be rustic looking for the leather. And here I'm just kind of molding the leather here, getting it into form. After I'm done wet molding it, I take off the little clamps right there. That way I can punch some holes. Now I'll just take my hole punch, add a few punches, and then we're going to move on to the leather lace right here. I'm just lace it up. And by the way, I had to cut into the leather again because I made the leather too big, which I didn't show that. And here is the finished product. And I'll show you a video in just a second of this after I'm done showing you how I did the designs with the burrs. So one of the main burrs I used was this Dura Grit. I think it's a flathead burr. I can't remember the exact name, but it just is a regular flat burr like this. And I took the side of it and I just went around the pencil designs right around there. Now I showed this, but like I said, my um, memory card threw an error on me. So I just went around here, around all the designs, got it as straight as I could, then I followed up. The other burr I use is this round carbide burr right here. Now this is a Fordham one, you can get some Dremel ones, but I really like the Fordham brand because they last a lot longer. And I just went around there where that other burr couldn't go and I just got around the sides of it and in here. I used a round burr for inside here when I um, created space. So, and then after that, I took a, this burr right here. This is another um, jury grit burr. And you see how flat it is? It just reaches right in there in the hard spaces, and I can just sit there and, and ju just flatten everything out. Like this right here, you can see all this is pretty much smooth. I went through here and just got um, off all my bevels and everything. And then, now I just took my sandpaper here and I just went over all the rough areas after I got through with the burrs. So a tip here is when you are sanding, try to get it as smooth as you can with your burrs before you switch to sandpaper. That will save you a ton of time. But I do have many, many, many hours into sanding this. This wasn't a um, quick job. So anyway, it turned out pretty cool. Uh, there's still, as an artist, I still see mistakes all over it. but. Um, uh, I'm still pretty happy with it. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more content like this, hit the like and subscribe button down below. I have a lot of other projects like this I'm going to be doing and showing you guys. Now, if you have an Instagram account, go follow me over there because like I show a lot of stuff there I don't show on YouTube. And this right here, I've already posted a long time ago a lot of the process of me making it. So I try to keep all of my social media outlets a little different so you can connect with me in different ways. So if you don't have Instagram, go make you one. So leave me a comment below what you think about this. I would love to hear your feedback on it. I will see you guys later.